Hey everyone, this is Ross from CryptoCrane. Today I'll be reviewing the brand new Antminer D3 Dash Miner from Bitmain. The D3 is advertised as being able to reach 15 gigahashes per second with an estimated power usage of 1200 watts. 15 gigahashes per second may not sound like much compared to Bitmain's Antminer S9 series, which is measured in terahashes per second, but keep in mind that this miner is using the X11 algorithm, which means it can mine any X11 based coin. The X11 algorithm is significantly more processor intensive than the SHA-256 algorithm used by Bitcoin miners. For a comparison, a top of the line NVIDIA GeForce 1080 Ti can only do around 15 mega hashes per second, which makes the D3 over 1000 times more powerful when it comes to mining X11 coins like Dash. As you can see here, you'll need a power supply that has at least 10 6-pin PCIe power connectors. That's 3 for each of the 3 hashing boards and one more for the controller. The D3 has dual 120mm high airflow fans, one for intake and one for exhaust. On the front, you'll find the network port, status lights, and reset button. I should point out that there's a fair amount of dust on the fans right out of the box. It's always been assumed that Bitmain likes to test their devices before shipping. I suppose no one should be surprised here. Unlike some of the power supply confusion that surrounds other ant miners, we can finally say that there's a single most recommended power supply, the APW3++. Unlike the previous generations, APW3 and APW3+, the APW3++ is capable of supplying up to 1200 watts over 110 volt and up to 1600 watts over 220 volt. Since the D3 only needs 1200 watts, this will work in either situation. Since the APW3++ is a server grade power supply, it can actually run at the full 1200 watts non-stop. That's not something I'd recommend for a consumer grade PC power supply. Since I'm not very close to my internet router, I'm going to use a Wi-Fi bridge. Notice the watt meter at the top right portion of the screen shows that I'm currently connected to a standard 120 volt circuit. The APW3++ requires a C13 power cable which it does not come with. Always remember to connect the power connectors from the power supply to the miner before plugging in the power supply to the wall. As you're about to hear, the D3 is not a quiet machine. These are not suitable for an office or a living room. Surprisingly, the D3 starts mining in under 2 minutes. That might be a record for an ant miner. Well, this is a nice surprise. Rather than requiring 1200 watts like Bitmain had advertised, it seems to be maxing out at just 980 watts. That is significantly better than promised. The D3 maxes out at around 72 decibels. Not bad, but still not quiet. To turn off the D3, simply unplug the power supply. To ensure that the capacitors within the power supply have discharged completely, wait till the fan has stopped spinning on the power supply before disconnecting the power connectors from the miner. I wanted to compare the power usage when using the same configuration on a higher voltage circuit. As you can see, the D3 requires just over 910 watts on this 240 volt circuit. Thus far, my initial impressions of the hardware are very positive. The sound is not as obnoxious as previous generations of the Ant Miner, and the power usage is way better than advertised. Now that we've completed the hardware setup, let's move on to the configuration. To reach the Miner's web management interface, I enter the D3's IP address into a web browser. Please note that you can only reach this IP address while you're on the same network as the Miner. The default username and password are both root. Yep, it's an Antminer D3. I have to admit, I'm a little nervous to click the miner status page. With the lower power usage, I'm worried that maybe it's not hashing at full speed. Um, wow. Okay, that's 17.5 giga hashes per second. That is more than a 10% improvement over what they advertised. It appears that all 180 ASIC chips are fully operational. But these chip temps look a little bit higher than what I'm used to seeing. Uh, I'm pretty sure the cutoff is 80 degrees Celsius, and I'm seeing 72 here. 
Okay, let's get our pools configured and get this crazy machine mining. I've chosen NiceHash.com for my first pool. NiceHash is different than other pools because it actually resells your hashing power to the highest bidder. Remember, the Antminer D3 is an X11-based ASIC. Okay, just going to copy and paste all my info into the settings here. Optionally, you can append the worker ID with a period followed by a number to differentiate multiple miners on NiceHash's dashboard. This can be useful for seeing individual stats for each of your miners. In this test, I will not be configuring the backup pools. Backup pools are what the miner will fail over to if the primary pool goes offline. We highly recommend configuring backup pools. Configuring backup pools does not split your mining power between pools at the same time. Rather, the second and third pools are only used if the corresponding pools ahead of them are offline. After clicking the Save Apply button, go to the Miner Status tab to make sure everything's running smoothly. It's nice to see that the first test wasn't a fluke and that we're actually averaging 17.5 gigahashes per second after nearly an hour. To make things interesting, we're actually going to compare three different pools using three different Antminer D3s all running at the same time. All three D3s measured at the same 17.5 gigahashes per second. At the 18 hour mark, the ProHashing.com pool went offline. We decided that 18 hours was enough time to show an accurate comparison between the pools. On NiceHash, we mined nearly 0.02 Bitcoin. Remember, NiceHash pays out in Bitcoin no matter what your miner is actually mining. NiceHash estimates that we should be able to earn 0.025 Bitcoin per day at the current speed. At the current exchange rate, that's $98.61. Since we know we have already mined $77 after 18 hours, we're able to calculate that 24 hours at the same rate should equal $103. During the same time period, the ProHashing.com pool was able to mine $74.50. At less than $3 difference between ProHashing and NiceHash, I'd say they're neck and neck. When calculated over 24 hours, we end up with $99.33. Last but not least, we have zpool.ca. When I saw that the D3 had mined 0 0.025 Bitcoin in the first 18 hours, I had to double check everything to make sure that I wasn't misreading the numbers. Yep, everything looks like it checks out. Uh, I think I actually earned that much in 18 hours. I'm, I'm pretty impressed, to say the least. At the current exchange rate, 0 0.025 Bitcoin is worth $98. When calculated across 24 hours, we end up with $130 mined in a single day. That's substantially more than we mined using the other two pools. It's important to note the massive effect that these D3s are expected to have on the global hash rate, which dictates the network difficulty. Remember, the more hashing power directed at a single coin, the less the reward is for each miner. That's why the first batch of D3s have been so difficult to get your hands on. Everyone wants to ride the X11 mining wave before the profits decline too far. In conclusion, we found that the Antminer D3 has far exceeded our expectations. Bitmain has knocked one out of the park with this release. Not only do they use significantly less power than originally advertised, they are a full 2.5 gigahashes per second faster than promised. The only remaining questions are how reliable will they be over time, and how profitable will they continue to be when more X11 miners come on the market. If you're looking for a trusted American distributor who specializes in cryptocurrency mining hardware, then consider checking out our Amazon store using the link in the description. As of this recording, we still have Antminer D3s in stock and ready for immediate shipping to customers located within the United States. Make sure to check the description for inventory updates as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe or leave a question in the comment section down below. We always try to answer to the best of our ability.